Imagine that you fix a camera at one position and take a photograph of the sun for every day till one year at the same time, let's say at eight o'clock, you'll have a lot of photos. But what if you combine all of them together? You'll get this. Such a photograph is known as an analemma. You'll notice that the sun moves in the figure of an eight. Why is this so? Because we are taking a photo of the sun at the same time, you'll think that the sun will be at the same location in the sky throughout the year. But that is not the case. The earth tilts on its axis while revolving around the sun. During the month of June, the northern hemisphere will be tilted towards the sun. While during the month of December, the southern hemisphere will be tilted towards the sun. Due to this tilt, an observer from the earth will feel as if the sun is moving up and down throughout the year. This up and down motion of the sun causes the vertical component of the mo sun's movement in an analemma. But what causes the horizontal movement of the sun? The orbit of earth around the sun is not perfectly circular. It's more of an ellipse. Due to this, the sun appears to move right and left throughout the year. But there is one more thing that controls the shape of an analemma. Apse line. Let's take a look at what is an apse line. An apse line is a line drawn from the apogee to the perigee of a planet. Apogee is the place where the planet will be the farthest away from the sun and perigee is the place where the planet is near to the sun. Now during winter solstice, the earth will be around this position. If you draw a line from the earth to the sun at that time, you'll get an angle like this. This angle is known as the angle of apse. The angle of apse determines how much larger the bottom portion of the analemma will be to the top portion. In fact, there is a cool website known as Analemma Generator where you can change the eccentricity, axial tilt and apse angle values of a planet's orbit and then you can watch how the analemma changes. You can create analemmas of various weight shapes. The analemma will be perfectly horizontal at the equator. As you move up or down, the analemma will tilt to one side. If you are on Northern Hemisphere, the topmost point of your analemma will be on the summer solstice. Summer solstice is when you get the longest day. The bottommost point of the analemma will be on winter solstice. Winter solstice is when you get the longest night. On Southern Hemisphere, it will be vice versa. The analemma of a planet depends upon the axial tilt and the eccentricity of the orbit around the Sun. So, for another planet, its analemma will be different. When the Opportunity rover was on Mars, it had an instrument known as Mars Dial. Mars Dial is similar to a sundial on Earth, but on Mars. The Opportunity rover took an analemma from Mars. On Mars, the analemma is on the shape of a teardrop. We only have analemmas from Earth and Mars. We don't have analemmas from Mercury or Jupiter or Saturn, but we can calculate the analemma from that planet. The analemma from Mercury will be a straight line. The analemma from Venus and Jupiter will be an ellipse. While the analemma from Uranus, Neptune and Saturn will be a figure 8. But geosynchronous satellites also make an analemma. A geosynchronous satellite is a satellite with orbital period equal to one day. So it means that a geosynchronous satellite will be always above one point on Earth. A geosynchronous satellite will be at the distance of 35786 km from the surface of Earth. But every satellite is not perfectly geosynchronous. It will be off by a minute value. Due to this, geosynchronous satellites also create an analemma over Earth. The first successful photograph of an analemma was in 1978 by Dennis Lisico. But the first successful photo of a tutulemma was in 2005 by two Turkish photographers. But what exactly is a tutulemma? A tutulemma is an analemma but with a solar eclipse. Analemmas are photographed over one year but the result is totally worth it. Thanks for watching. Before you go, I've written a book about psychology called A Brain Stay. It's available on Amazon. Click here to buy it.